Here we go. What's going on guys? Welcome to another edition of the Nerd Chase channel. I'm your boy Nerd Chase and in this video we're going to continue our episodic reviews of the Netflix live action Resident Evil series. Now in this review we're going to be doing episode 6, what is it called? Someone's Little Girl and we'll see if this has episode was actually better than the last because so far they've been pretty fucking trash. So. Uh, before we get to uh, started, we're we'll gonna go ahead and pop that button right quick. Sweet. We're gonna pull up the microphone. I hit this the other day, so I got messed up. Uh, and then I'm going to say, be sure to subscribe, hit that like, that share button, hit the notification button as well to get the best of what we got going on on this channel. And without further ado, let's go ahead and talk Resident Evil. Now, this wasn't a good episode, <laughs> but let's, let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead with it. Now, uh, the, episode's, uh, the episode starts off with Wesker pulling into this parking lot, which is Umbrella Corporation's uh, parking lot. He goes in. He talks to Evelyn. Evelyn is like, what happened to your head? Now, obviously, the episode before, Billy hit him in the head with a pan. But Wesker ends up saying that because he was interrogating uh, Angel or Rubio, whatever the guy's name is, who was the reporter guy that was, uh, that was stupid enough to get caught because he came into the heart of Umbrella. Um, said Rubio got a, or Angel, whatever his freaking name is. I'm going to say Rubio. Uh, got a little rowdy with him, which, which is why he got the mark. Which I don't understand because that wouldn't be a smart thing to say because the next scene they actually showed that this is being recorded. So all she Evelyn has to do, if she hadn't have done it already, was go back and look at the tapes, look at the recording and everything. And I'm like, shouldn't she have reviewed the recording after all? Oh, if you can't say. Does this man, uh, did you get anything out of this guy and it's being recorded? You would know if he got anything out of him because it was recorded. So, Wesker ends up going back into the room. For some reason, I still don't understand why Wesker, who is a scientist, is interrogating this guy. It would make more sense for the security to do it, not Wesker. Now, you could say well, Wesker was a Billy Badass back in the day during the, eventual, uh, uh, the original Raccoon City, but if you think about it, that was what 14 years ago oh, that, that was a while ago so even if that was the case you still wouldn't put Wesker on that that didn't really make sense but Wesker ends up talking to Evelyn to allow him to use this concoction which could be utilized as a truth serum now that it does come with risk but we know Wesker Wesker has alternative uh, plans for why he wants to utilize this so he goes in there talks to the guy uh, does offer the guy uh, does show that he isn't there to actually, he not, not there for malicious intent. Uh, he generally, I, I don't know. He does want to silence the guy because he don't want his daughters to be in danger. And I would say he would do it just to silence his daughter, but he does try to come off being a little bit genuine. But he gets the reaction that he expected, sticks the guy in the neck with the, the syringe, the guy dies. And not even a second after this guy dies, Evelyn is rushing into the room. And I'm like, so what? I'm thinking she was on the other side of the like glass or whatever. And she saw what happened. But as soon as the guy dies, the security and people just run straight in. It's like, were, were y'all fucking waiting for this? Y'all literally didn't even wait a second. And it wasn't like he ran out there with like, hey, this man died. Come check him out. No, they literally ran in the exact second he died. I was like, oh. Okay, I mean, y'all, y'all, when they say first responders, they don't play, which again is weird because where was that uh, immediate r first response during the events of the first few episodes? But I digress. So, of course, Evelyn, for some reason, immediately questions Wesker. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Because he does say, hey, if I wanted to go ahead and sabotage you, I could have been done it. And he would have been much more effective doing it because he's into that all of that dirty little secrets. So she captured him, subdues him, uh, apprehends him. And I'm like, why? It doesn't really make any sense. You don't have any evidence 
that Wesker was involved in it is. So why would you do that to him? So, okay, but then we're going to the future. And I do like this because they copied the formula from last episode. Do something from the past at the beginning. Do something in the past at the end. But make one story of one timeline the majority of the episode. And this time it's the future. So we get a couple of uh, neat little things here. Billy and Jade are talking, and it's a bunch of bullshit. Stuff you're not interested in. You don't get caught up of which, what's going on with the other outside of what we know. Of course, Billy's like, well, I heard you got a daughter. We already know Billy's got a daughter. Uh, we, we know that, um, not Billy, we already know Jade's got a daughter. Then, like, they're looking for the library because that's where, or the college campus or wherever it was that, Jay was going to we already know that even though Billy said it so we don't really we don't really even know what's going on with Billy except the only thing she says remotely interesting is that Evelyn is still running the show which I was under the impression that Evelyn died and Billy was the one running the show but okay and then that Wesker died and I was like wouldn't be the first time but anyways so they go back and forth with just drama just stupid shit that doesn't make any sense Again, it'd be different if we if they catch us up on what happened uh, during the events of the apocalypse and all of that. Now I understand the past story is building up to why they went their separate ways and everything. But even after the fact, if there was a little bit of a what you know that whole time jump since the last time they seen each other and they actually give a bit more insight about what's going on, you know, it would make more sense. Billy, what's Billy been doing this entire time? Wasn't even mentioned. So we don't know what the hell's been going on. But anyways, so they talk about drama. Not really interested. Now, the, and the thing is, and it kind of gets me again because I don't like Jay because she does this. She says that Wesker is a psychopath. This is like the second or third time she said that. And I'm thinking to myself, but this psychopath took care of y'all, went out his way and put his own safety on the line to make sure that y'all were okay. And y'all continuously did dumb shit. Despite the fact that this man actually wanted his way to protect y'all several times. Which led up to the events of what happened earlier in this episode. The fact that Jay contacted this guy and told this guy all of this stuff. The fact that this idiot actually came there. All because she made this a conscious decision based off what Billy did too. So you're like, y'all make bad decisions and that's what leading up to this. and I get this guy got a bad past and everything but damn you gotta go back you gotta go off what you've experienced with this man which is nothing but unconditional love security and care so all of this you keep calling this man a psychopath in your lifetime you hadn't seen it so fuck all that stuff if there's anybody that's a damn psychopath it's your ass because ever since day one episode people die and bad things have happened everywhere you've turned to so she gets him on that that whole psychopath stuff. She's trying to have the stupid moral high ground, but she makes all of these fucking terrible decisions. They get people hurt or killed. So they're out, and you the way the episode, the way everything is presented. Billy is a bad guy now. She's with Umbrella. She's loyal to Umbrella, and Jade is the fighter against Umbrella. And then all of a sudden, Billy makes this weird confession that. She wanted to hear Jade. Jade said she'd rather die than go to Umbrella. Billy's like, I wanted to hear that. So I'm thinking, okay, she's going to put a bullet in her ass. Doesn't. She just breaks down basically saying, hey, you know, I wanted to hear that. I'm not a bad guy. I'm with you on this. I should have uh, went with you. I shouldn't have stayed with Umbrella. Um, I missed you. I'm out. I'm always being your sister. She sends these guys out, the, the soldiers or whatever, out. Let's J uh, Jade go. Un it takes out the chip that this tracker that they put in her. We don't see her put them put it in her, but they put one in her when they drew her blood, which we didn't see. So, because Jade did make a big point, a point of that. She was like, Oh, you took my blood. I was like, We didn't see you. What are you talking about? So, anyways, takes the track out, tells uh, Jade that she's dying, I guess. And Jade is like, no, you're immune. And she's like, no, I'm not immune. It just works slower. And I was like, didn't the apocalypse, ain't the apocalypse been active for what, like 14 years? 
how fucking slow is this the dying process for you? Because everybody else got knocked out in like three days. You've been alive for like over a decade. So I'm trying to figure out what the issue is. So Jade gets the head that she had and she fucking takes off and Billy lets her go. And I was like, any tension that could have been built up between these two sisters, it would have made for a more compelling story. Because they went the CW route like they always do. But if you're going to go the CW route, you can make it a bit more compelling. That just got flushed down the fucking drain. But okay. So any tension between the sisters is just gone now. Bullshit. There's no character development. Okay, fine. So... This part kind of gets me. I didn't understand it. Jade manages to get out of the facility. She's running through the place. And I understand the people, the umbrella the soldiers were leaving and stuff. I was like, she didn't see not one soldier. And it, it wasn't like she snuck out. It wasn't like she did any smart maneuvering, resourcefulness, some strategic planning to get out. She just got out. These motherfuckers didn't see her at all. We didn't see any of them. I'm like, wow, okay, fine. That kills into more tension. So she gets out with the head, and then the editing is so weird in this next scene because it shows her running. And it show, from the way that it shows it, it shows that she run less than 30 seconds. And then she pops up next to a beach, and then... These people like like you know freeze and she turns around. There's people she know, people she's been looking for. And what's confusing is okay, the way it's presented is she just escaped the facility, and not thirty seconds later she see the people that she's been wanting to see. And I, my question is, how did they find her? Because if it's, if it's shown, if it's if 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 it is that she was running for like a couple of hours or something, it didn't show that. It showed that she literally got out the facility, ran down the hill, they found her. And I was like, how did they know where to find her at? She didn't tell them where they were. And I'm like, I get tired of Jade escaping these places and then people fucking randomly find, finding out where she is when they have no freaking reason to find her. But they found her, and I'm like, how the fuck did they find her? So it's people that they that she know, that, that she's been cool with, the, the, the people that she's been with, and they take her to this giant ship. And again, I make this reference. What the fuck is this? Resident Evil Afterlife? First, we're in like a jail. Now, late, uh, earlier they say bunker, but I'm like, that's like a jail to me. What the fuck was, what kind of bunker has sails like that? Look like a prison to me. But you had the prison, and now we got a big ship. So, just saying. And then the episode. I, I kind of want to say it, but I'm not going to say it. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll, I, I'll jump to it and I'll make this We're going to circle back. We're going to make that reference. So, on the ship, this ship is the place that they that she's lived. I, apparently, that this this small group of people that she's dealing with, that she's been cool with, this whatever group that she's with, this is where they are. They've been on this ship. And I've been asking myself a lot of questions since the ship popped up. One, this ship... If it is next to the area where the jail was, and this ship is right there, Umbrella didn't see this ship? And if this ship is a, is their mobile fortress or whatever, obviously they have to refuel. And in a world, you know, with dwindling resources, billions of zombies and everything, where the fuck are they refueling at? And if... And I would think that if they were refueling somewhere, naturally, Umbrella or some other powerhouse or whatever would probably have control over that. Because control over a resource like that gives you power. So, again, this ship kind of makes me, um, it makes me ask a lot of questions that really aren't addressed at all, actually. In fact, they ain't. 
They ain't at all. So, at first, what, uh, apparently what we th thought was a, a, like a solitary location is, I guess, a ship. So, anyways, on the ship, uh, the guy who I fucking thought was Simon in the future is some other random guy. Uh, and I guess Jay's got a thing for non-black people. Non-black and non-white people. Because one guy was Hispanic she liked and then the other guy was it, it, that she's talking to is like a, a Middle Eastern and then the one guy that she made a joke towards earlier about how they look good was white so I was like well okay so uh but then you know she has a mixed daughter so that's another thing and I tell you the mixed daughter's got to be Simon's but anyways uh, that was a little bit of a spoiler. So, anyways, you get to see her. You get to see her daughter. Daughter kind of favors, kind of favors her, but not really. The daughter kind of reminds me of how she looked when she was younger, but not how she looks now. Uh, it's meant to give character depth, especially given all of the bad stuff that she's been experiencing in the last couple of episodes. Honestly, Jade is such a shit character. And for, I'm not going to lie, for a little spell, I'm like, okay, it's nice to see her with a daughter. It's nice to see her with whatever this is. What's this guy's name? Something. I don't remember this guy's name. It started with A. It was like, fuck the guy. He wasn't even really that uh, relevant in a way. He was he's a very passive guy. He's a very affirming guy. So I don't really like his character. He's He doesn't seem like he has... Like, she's the ma the masculine one in the relationship, obviously. And you know, I don't like him. I, that same BS that Simon had to deal with when they were younger, that he's dealing with it now. I, just, I don't really like the guy. But it is nice to see kind of the relationship between her and her daughter. And there is something that comes up about how she doesn't want to be like Wesker was to her when she's so busy with her work. And she's very neglectful of her kid, which just a lot of... She does. She does do that. She is so invested in trying to save the world and all his experiments and stuff, which is another reason why she was out for six months studying fucking zombies. That that does affect her daughter, and even though she's scared of it, she still does it. So, you, I like. I do like that. That's kind of interesting. That's good for like character development and stuff like that too. But, and then the rest of it is a bunch of drama and stuff. Uh, the daughter has like a recital, a piano recital, and I'm thinking to myself, why in the hell is this in fucking Resident Evil? It's not interesting. It doesn't help the story. It's not conducive to anything. It doesn't tie up any good story. Like, what does this actually do except affirm the daughter? Because the moment she gets back on the boat and she's talking with I'm mad or whatever the guy's name is. He's like, well, your daughter is a genius and she's good at this. She's naturally good at this, naturally good at this, naturally good at this. And a part of you is like, well, Wesker admitted to, you know, messing with the genetics, which made them uh, made them smarter, stronger, and all that stuff to other people. Why, why, why that would not be passed down to the daughter? Again, strong women characters, even though it's not worked for, even though it's not earned, they just have it naturally. And this... And what other natural way to do it than genetics? So the daughter's smart, going to be smarter than her mom now, which who's already smarter than everybody else. But that's not saying much because everybody else are fucking idiots, and she is too, especially with this next bit. So her and her fan Emrita, who's pregnant, she's actually seen like a decent character, uh, um, and they have like a moment where they're like experimenting on his head to try to. <clears throat> figure out why this zombie is able to scream and control other zombies, which they which they do. And I do like this little sit segment of them like experimenting on the te on the virus and stuff, trying to unlock the secrets of it and stuff. Cause that feels a bit more like Resident Evil. Yes, the characters are shit and the circumstances are stupid, but it feels a bit more like Resident Evil. Kind of the the science fiction aspect of it. I, I did like that. I, I honestly I did. And then, you know, so there's a recital, and then they come back, they end up finding out that the zombie has the ability to highlight people with pheromones, which makes zombies attack them, and it's airborne, but they also have uh, <clears throat> pheromones to make 
them not attack people, make them like because the zombies smell and they attack what they can smell. But the pheromones mask whoever they're, <coughs> whoever or whatever. So you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. <coughs> so they decide that they're gonna experiment on it. You know, they're gonna try to experiment on it, but they're not gonna do it now. They're gonna wait to get permission. But we all know Jade. She's impul impulsive, impatient, and she does not give two shits about the uh, people around her. All right, cool. So, of course, Jade's a fucking idiot, and she has the brick, which we all knew she was going to do something stupid, because she just cannot help being a fucking dumbass. She, does, she doesn't tell anybody that she's doing this. She has to test it now. She decides that earlier, a few minutes earlier, they end up sailing next to a couple of overturned boats. But they said like ghost ships or something like that. And you can see that there's zombies under the water. And the way the zombie, this is the ocean. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at, I'm like, would the zombies be in the water like that? Because my understanding is like you sink. After a while, you, your body would probably sink and then be ate up by, like, sharks and stuff like that. But these bodies seem like they're just preserved out of nowhere. And another thing kind of got me was, I'm like, so why are these boats overturned and stuff like that? Was it a storm? Was it pirates? Did they get attacked by underwater zombies? Did Umbrella fly over and blow them up? So, another question. So, they know that they're zombies. I, I guess they suspected that potentially zombies that around because we see zombies in the water and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, they parked the boat next to that. Look at these ghost ships and overturned ships and boats and stuff. And there's zombies in there, so they just parked the ship right next to that. Okay, so how convenient? How fucking convenient for Jade? Jade decides to go out there in the middle of the fucking night grabs one of the corpses out of the water and this is how again she's so fucking stupid because if she's going to do this my I have a, a thing if you're going to do something wrong do it right she pulls this zombie out of this cold ass water puts it in the little boat she got doesn't subdue it doesn't put a cloth around his mouth so it can't bite her doesn't Put uh, tie its hands and feet so it can't, you know, grab her or jump up and move and stuff. What did she do? She literally fucking turns her back to it. And not only did she turn her back to it, she turned her back to it and held it there for a, for a second. And I'm like, okay, obviously this zombie's gonna jump the fuck up. Why would she do this? So, of course, the fucking zombie jumps up and almost bites her. But she manages to stab it with this something because i'm like what well, the zombie's blood isn't flowing then what is the point of you stabbing it with this with injecting it with this and i guess it put the zombie to sleep but i'm like again if the zombie's blood is like coagulated and stuff the way it's typically shown to be because you shoot a zombie they don't really bleed like that so and his heart isn't beating like that i mean how did you injecting it with the serum stop it or put it to sleep or whatever but okay that makes sense but fine she puts it in a big a backpack or a duffel bag or something and it looks like a kid yeah it looks like a kid it's an ugly ass kid i mean i get it as a zombie damn it's ugly ass. either that or just too much fucking makeup i don't get I mean, i guess because it's in the water and you swell up and they were trying to make it look like that but look so anyway, she takes the zombie into the laboratory. Nobody knows that the zombie's on board. And I'm like, she takes, she brings a live fucking zombie on board a ship full of people and don't tell nobody that she does. She's doing it. Now, of course, they're trying to make paint her to be the good guy because she's doing it supposedly for good reasons. But she's a fucking idiot. So she straps the zombie to the wall with straps. And I'm like, wouldn't it make more sense for, I don't know, like handcuffs or something? And she don't strap it to where it's like, 
she strapped like like if you're gonna strap it, you're not just gonna strap it by the arms. You might strap it by the arms. You might strap it by like right here by the wrist, by the arms, by the waist, by the neck, by the legs, by the feet. So it has no room to fucking move. But no, she straps it only by the hand, by his wrist, by the thing's wrist. Not it didn't even take the time out to strap the feet up so it can't fucking take off and run. So and then the stupid and obviously this is her daughter. I believe that's her daughter now. Because her daughter is a fucking idiot just as much as she is. The daughter meanders into the fucking laboratory and I'm thinking to myself, why the, is the door not closed? And I could have sworn that there was a door uh, there at one point. So what's two ways in and one has a door and one doesn't? So the daughter meanders on in there, sees the mom has the zombie in there, freaks out, mom try to calm her down, tells her, hey, we've got something that could potentially save everybody. Do not move your punk ass from where you are. Stay there. Fucking stay there. What does this dumb child do? Steady talking. Steady moving. Steady doing dumb shit. So the, so Jay sprays the pheromones on her, and it works. She's out in the zombie's face. The zombie's not reacting to her. Cool. Smartest thing she did. But, of course, she got a fucking a daughter that's just like her. Is a fucking idiot, too. And what does the daughter do? Pops out in front of the fucking... So where the zombie can fucking see her. Now, I have a problem with this because... They, the zombies temp, t uh, tend to go hyperactive when in the presence of blood. There was no presence of blood outside of Jade's. And the zombie didn't smell a, a Jade's blood because it was smelling pheromones. And supposedly zombies can't fucking see. And now unless that girl was musty or she had some sweet cologne on or something, would the zombie just all of a sudden just react and go for it like that? I don't know. But this also brings up another interesting point because in the first episode, Jade ends up spraying something on her. And to a certain extent, it seemed like it actually worked. I didn't pick up on it then, but I picked up on it now. Now, in the first episode, Jay pokes the bunny in the ear, the zombie's head for the bunny, and they pretty much ignore Jay until she cuts her own arm. And if we're going by they can't see or whatever, but they can smell, then what she sprayed on her, did, did that not mask her scent from them? So, anyways, the girl, fucking idiot, sees that the shit is fucking working. Sees that the zombie's not reacting to her mom. Actually fucking sees it. Goes over there to say, get the mom's attention in the perfect sight of the damn zombie, which probably shouldn't be able to see, but I guess smelled her. And the zombie just fucking goes nuts. And then this is the part where I'm like, well, Jade is another, uh, idiot, another, uh, another idiot on that list of idiotic things she's done. The zombie breaks out of the fucking straps. Like it's nothing. I'm like, how? So I'm like, Jay didn't even check the fucking straps? So the zombie attacks the daughter. Jay, you know, manages to get the, out the daughter. The zombie knocks Jade, stun, uh, knocks Jade off of her and stuns her. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So the daughter takes off fucking running down these empty ass corridors. And, uh, and, the daughter runs into Amrita and somebody else. And instead of the fucking daughter saying, and the, Amrita's like, okay, what's going on? Instead of the daughter saying zombie or zero, she says there. And then the zombie just jumps on Amrita and kills her. Yeah, that is Jay, that girl is truly Jay's daughter. Fucking stupid. A fucking idiot. Just like Jade is. So, and reaches her. Everybody comes out. Uh, 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 one of the women that Jade spoke to earlier. In fact, when Jade had the stupid thing on a duffel bag on her back, she bumped into this woman with a gun. That woman ends up killing the zombie. 
And then the Jake comes up. She's like, "Oh, it's my. This is all my fault." And then and Rita's husband about to shoot the shit out of Jay, but Jay's husband comes over there and, and you know saves her basically. And then Umbrella Helicopter show up, kind of like the end of Resident Evil Afterlife. There's a lot of similarities there. See, I brought that back. You had the jail, you had the ship, and then at the end of the fucking uh, movie, the helicopter, the umbrella helicopter showed the fuck up. Now, they don't specifically say umbrella, but we all know that umbrella helicopters. And that's, and then that's the end of the future, and then it goes back to the past. In the past, the umbrella coroner is looking at Rubio slash Angel, the reporter's body, they see that his body's mutating and because he starts shaking, it starts mutating. So obviously Wesker infected him with the T virus or some progenitor virus, some stupid shit. And, uh, and then Wesker's locked in a room and a panel pops out of the side wall. He looks through it and then there's another Wesker that looks just like him. And that's how the episode ends. And holy Jesus, this was just, if, this could have been a good moment. Be, and, and I say this, say it this why, because the fact that they didn't do the jumping back and forth helped to establish the story of the present day a bit better. The fact that we got to see a little bit of Jade's family, uh, or deal with her daughter, helped, helped with her character a little bit. The fact that we got to see a bit more of like the scientific aspect of the T-virus, them sitting here researching, doing these testing to try to figure out how the zombie is able to utilize the abilities that it has, feels like Resident Evil. And then you have bullshit as drama between Billy and Jade that didn't make any fucking sense. The initial, uh, Evelyn's initial choice to ca uh, subdue Wesker, which came out of the fucking blue. She has no reason to do that. So characters are just making dumbass decisions. Uh, drama that's just so contrived. And then Jade and her fucking daughter are just dumbasses. Especially Jade, but I, I, can't, I gotta fault the daughter too. And Rita, I thought, was a decent character. She didn't get much screen time. But I was like, okay, cool. She's a decent character. She's not an asshole like everybody else. More unlikable. And then Jay just goes out and does some of the dumbest fucking shit. All the bullshit with, the, uh, with the, her hubby, her fault. The zombie got brought out and Rita got killed, her fucking fault. Bad decisions all around. I cannot stress just how bad of a fucking character Jade is. There's literally no reason for somebody to be written this bad. And then all the affirmations that she get from uh, her hubby and then the daughters getting the affirmations and all that. The only good thing about this episode that I can say is we didn't get to see the younger versions of Jade and Billy. But Jade just went full dumbass mode on her, so she pretty much made up for that. Only good thing is the younger versions weren't in it. But, like I said, I was going to give this episode a three uh, based on, you know, uh, what happened with her and her daughter, the scientific aspect of it, uh, the Amrita chick, I actually liked her, but everything else just I'm going to get this, uh, uh, I really want to give it a fucking one. I really, I really want to give this a fucking one. But I'm just going to give it a, I'm going to give it a two. Because those scenes, and that stuff actually kind of had me a little bit intrigued. And just the base, and the way the story was told too. With it being basically the full episode being set in the present. But everything else is just fucking dumb. The writer is an asshole. He's a talentless, or she's a talentless hack in a don't need to be writing shit anymore. This is literally was some of the worst fucking writing. And it was and then not only was it bad, it was so fucking predictable. I was like, oh my gosh, she's not gonna do Yep, she did that. I was like 
Ouch. But anyways, guys, in the comment section below, I know this is re just review is shorter than the rest of them, but not a lot of shit happened like that. But anyways, in the comment section below, let me know what are your thoughts. Did you like the episode? Did you not like the episode? Did you agree with any of my points? And please tell me, did the meter of stupidity, did Jade break yours because she did mine? I mean, actually, I got like three or four of them broke. And I can't sit here and keep going to fucking Walmart buying them because they're expensive. For too expensive for one fucking character to be breaking damn near every episode. But aside from that, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, and that notification button to get the best of what we got going on, on this channel. We'll definitely catch you guys later.